everyone, and welcome to the Decision Day edition of Instant Replay, where I give you my take on the most controversial calls of the weekend. I'm Simon Borg. He was one of the stars of Week 34, Montreal Impact forward Didier Drogba. But after he did his damage with two goals, he had some damage done to him in the 83rd minute. Toronto defender Ahmed Kantari sends his studs into Drogba's knee, and the Impact's big star had to come out of the match for a few minutes. Meanwhile, no card shown to Kantari by referee Alan Kelly, although I would have gone straight red myself. There was a red shown at Toyota Stadium in Frisco, and the San Jose Earthquakes feel like it sealed their fate as they were eliminated from playoff contention. But it's hard to argue with Matias Perez Garcia getting a red for violent conduct after chasing down his compatriot Mauro Diaz and making contact with his head. Diaz also gets a yellow for this, but I'm not sure why. But in my opinion, the Quakes were fortunate that that was their only red card because a few minutes after that, Mark Pelosi looks like he cocks the elbow and sends it into Michael Barrios. Sure, Barrios is not severely injured by it, but I still think Pelosi should have been punished for the attempt with more than the yellow handed to him by referee Armando Villarreal. And Chris Buttig on Twitter argues that this Victor Bernardes tackle also warranted a red card in the 27th minute, but I'm actually okay with the yellow he got from Villarreal. He goes in for the ball and it's a reckless attempt. Tackles like the Bernardes one aren't that easy to judge. They're just not black and white, and we saw a few more in that category. Like this one Manuel Martinez challenge on Seattle's Leo Gonzalez. He gets a yellow for the late challenge, but he whacks him in the knee, and you can potentially argue serious foul play. I'm good with the yellow. And then in Portland, Rapids forward Luis Solinac takes down Diego Chara in the 20th minute, but look at what Chara does on the way up. Keeps both legs straight into Solinac's midsection, and I think he rightly takes exception. But no cards were forthcoming from referee Baldomero Toledo. But here's the thing, would a red have been outrageous there? Another two tackles that really straddle the line. NYCFC's Thomas McNamara on London Woodbury. He's going for the ball, but he endangers the safety. And then more graphic is this RJ Allen miss kick. Instead of kicking the ball, he sticks his cleats out into Jermaine Jones. Yeah, it's a mistake, but even mistakes can qualify as serious foul play. Now, referee Jair Marufo opted to not show cards on either of those two plays, but he did call a PK in the 90th minute, rightfully pointing out Daigo Kobayashi's handball in the box. And the Revs are denied a shutout by David Villa, who scored his 18th goal of the season and 7th from the penalty spot. Columbus crew assist Tony Chani was hoping for a penalty in the 19th minute against DC United, but referee Ismail Elfath wasn't biting on what looks to have been a dive from Chani. But Elfath trusts Chani simply lost his balance because he doesn't show a yellow for simulation. The Red Bulls got a PK in their shield clinching win at Toyota Park, and this Sasha Kleshton penalty proved the winner. His teammate Mike Grella drew the foul, and no doubt Chicago's Patrick Mayarko bumps him, but Grella also goes down fairly easy in my opinion. Good job by referee Kevin Stott not to call a penalty in the 31st minute in Vancouver, despite the protest from the Houston Dynamo. Whitecaps midfielder Russell Tybert knows nothing about this ball in the box. Any contact with his arm was purely incidental. Harjan Pada, Shane Grimmer, Whistler Maverick, Whitecaps Scarf, and Nick all wanted at least a second yellow on Garrido for this tackle on Kakura Mane, who was on a breakaway. I say he should have gone a straight red. Look at how Garrido's studs go into Mane's ankle. That was really, really dangerous, but no cards are shown. Orlando's Cristian Higuita was sent off in Philadelphia in the 86th minute for this second yellow, a stray arm into the face of Tranquila Barnetta. I think that's the right call by referee Chris Penso, but I think Higuita could have been sent off as early as the 17th minute for this foul on Fabinho, but he doesn't even get a yellow for it. Studs into the ankle? That's a red to me. And in my eyes, so was this Ray Gattis tackle on Higuita in the 59th minute, but he gets by with a yellow. Penso called the penalty for the union in this one, and it wound up being the game winner. It came in the 40th minute, and it's that guy again. Igita tripping up Sebastian Latou in the box, and Latou steps up to convert. But similarly, I thought Philly's CJ Sapong clips Luke Bowden from behind in the 79th minute. But no penalty was called there. Good spot by Kitsch on Twitter. And we end in Kansas City, where Sporting made it into the postseason on the final day with a win against the defending champs. But one of their two goals looked to be offside. Defender Kevin Ellis is ahead of the last defender on this shot by Chance Myers, but assistant Kermit Quisenberry doesn't spot it, and the goal stands. And now comes the good stuff, the MLS Cup playoffs, and we'll be back with another instant replay later this week for a full breakdown of the four midweek knockout round matches, which we'll produce with your help, of course, and the hashtag instant replay. Until then, for our editor, Abner Osevis, I'm Simon Borg. See you next time!